My first try with the UV resin dragon scale method was a lot of fun. I mean, who doesn't love blowing bubbles anyway? But honestly, coloring the dots was the most fun part. But look what happened when I added the top coat of resin. I lost all of the cell structure and those pretty bubbles just disappeared. What happened? What did I do wrong? Well, watch the video and see how I learned from this little disaster and what I did to fix it. So I went straight to YouTube to do some research and there are a lot of great videos out there and I picked a few to show you. They're just at random. These are all stainless steel drink tumblers with colored backgrounds, but I want to create this technique on a clear wine glass. And you can see in the first two videos that the UV resin is not tinted. So after the bubbles are cured, that's when the artist applied mica powders and paints to de define the bubbles. And that's where I went wrong. The most common method I've seen is coloring the UV resin with glitter, dye, or mica powder and this really does have a lot of possibilities. I really really love this look. On a clear wine glass this may may be my best bet so that is what I'm going to try first. I have two wine glasses I'm going to try this technique on today. Now I already have some UV resin in that cup and I've already tinted it with a little bit of this uh, aqua mica powder from Sesso. I'll have a link in the description. And then in the cup to the left, I have some white um, mica powder mixed in a cup with some UV resin. Then in this third cup, I'm going to put a tiny bit of eye candy no con blue. That's not really a tiny bit, but who's telling? I'm using Light Wish UV Resin. There's really not a perfect ratio between mm, really the UV resin and the mica powder. It's just, you know, according to how much you need. So I'm just putting a little bit of the UV resin into the cups. I don't need as much of the dark blue as I do the other colors. So I'm going to mix those up really, really well. And just make sure when you're working with mica powders that you really stir it well so that you avoid mm, any kind of little clumps and bumps in your UV resin. So mix it up really, really well until all the mica powder is incorporated really well in there. How many times can I say really well? You need to mix it really well, okay? And then of course you need a jar with some soapy water and this is just a mason jar with Dawn dish soap and water. I feel like I need to make a little bit more bubbles, so. Okay, now more bubbles. Then you need a UV resin curing lamp. I'm gonna do, I think, just a hair of this around the base. I feel like it would have been easier to use one of those little rubber spatula, silicone spatula things to spread this. Um, and I have a ton of them. I don't know why I didn't use it, but I know I didn't want to use my finger because then my glove would get all messy and I would get resin on everything. So I need to plan this a little bit better. And actually this paintbrush works really well. It's just a cheap paintbrush from I think the Dollar Tree or Timu maybe and I'm bl it looks like I'm blending the colors together but it actually um, I need to quit saying actually so much but it um, does create a really cool look. And I'll show you how I clean clean the uh, UV resin off the paintbrush and white. The paintbrush works really well as like a little scoop and I really, really like how it's the colors are all blending together. And I am applying a thicker layer than I did the first time and I think this is gonna work out a lot better. Sorry for the poor camera angle. I guess I need to work on that a little bit more, but I am gonna call this the 
twist and turn method of blowing the bubbles. And you know what? It works. Now I'm turning on my UV resin curing light and turning the glass so that um, because I've applied the UV resin and the bubbles all at one time rather than doing it in sections like the videos that I showed earlier. So I'm turning the glass so that it's a little bit easier to turn the glass than it is to turn the UV resin lamp to cure all the way around the glass. Now my UV resin lamp, I have a link in the description where you can get it on Amazon. It's by Let's Resin. The lamp is a 60 second cure lamp. It has a 60 second timer, so it'll turn off after 60 seconds. And then I just turn it back on and um, you know, continue curing. I am not gonna wipe the bubbles off. I'm just gonna set this glass aside and probably put out put it outside to cure in the sun for a little bit longer. And now I'm just gonna do the same with the second glass. I'm trying to use up the rest of the blue, and it would have been a whole lot easier to use. Uh, a paintbrush or a little scoop or one of those little silicone spatulas, but oh well. And I have plenty of this aqua left, plenty of the aqua. So I'm being very, very generous. And the colors are blending a little bit more on this one, but it's okay. Mm. Look how pretty that is. It'd be pretty without the bubbles. And now the last of the white. And again, I'm being very generous with the resin, but I think that is what I need. I need a a lot more of a thicker layer than I had before. It probably would have been a lot easier to do this wine glass in sections, but it really was not the look that I was going for. I want the color to be uniform all the way around the glass. So doing it in one fell swoop gave me the look that I was after. Now I'm gonna use the UV resin lamp for a full 60 second cycle and just turn the glass to make sure that I get all sides covered and cured. To clean all the uncured resin out of the silicone cups, I just pop them under the lamp and then once they're hard, it, the resin just pops right out. Now to clean my brushes, I put them on a paper towel and just uh, spray 91% Isopropyl alcohol really soak them down and then it wipes right off. And all these glasses I am taking outside to let them cure in the sun, but oh my gosh, what a difference. What a difference. Yes. Now I did a bunch all at once uh, in one day and then once I was done with the UV resin lamp, I stuck them outside and let them cure in the sun for a couple of hours and that made a huge difference. And I'm gonna do separate videos on the white ones and the aqua ones. You're just gonna have to wait. I am so excited how these look right now. You know, I do have some cleanup. These are very, um, boy, some of these pieces are really sharp. I don't know if there's a way to fix that or what, but uh, I, think, I think I'm just gonna do some sanding. This is a... Uh, so this is a 3M 60 grit sand, sanding block. It's a good grit. I think I need a new one though, but uh, I'm just going to sand it. I've made a little pedestal out of a Dollar Tree pool noodle with some tape. I've just taped it together just to support it. And I'm going to give these a good sand and then get my knife in here and clean up the rim. Um, I don't know if this will be enough, if I need to use sandpaper. No, I think that'll be fine. Oh, this is the good side. See, I need a new, a new sanding block because this one is definitely a little bit worn out, but... Let 
I'm gonna be doing I'm just sanding down all this rough stuff at the top. Like it's really, really textured. It's really rough. And I'm gonna give it a sand and see if maybe I mean it's definitely working. I need to put some elbow grease behind it and just get it all smooth. See how it's tearing it up? It definitely is shredding this sand block. But it's working. Like, it's really... It's not... I'm not looking... I'm not after a super smooth finish. You can... You're... I still want to be able to feel the bumps, but not the sharp edges that'll, you know, cut your finger, because I'm sure, I'm sure it would, so it is just shredding it. Like, I'm 100% going to have to buy a new sandy block. It is really pretty. I think I'm getting some gold, gold um, mica powder on here for some reason. All right, that is sharp. I'm just going to feel around until I'm happy. Okay. That feels good, actually. Now, the bottom, I definitely... Some sanding. Light sanding. You'll see that. See what I'm doing? what it is. All right. The feel, I, I'm liking that. Liking the feel of it for sure. It's not rough. It's pebbly. That's the, that's the phrase I'm looking for, pebbly. So, all right, I'm going to set this one aside and do the next one. Oh, I really love the look of this one. This is from the little tiny bubbles. Like champagne bubbles. This is more like, I don't know. These are bigger. These are like little champagne bubbles. So I really like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I think I have enough grit in here. I don't know.
So what this reminds me a little bit, honestly, is like splinters on the glass. Resin splinters because they're they're raised up and they're sharp like splinters would be in wood. And I don't think there's a rhyme or reason for that. I don't know. I've I've looked for answers on different YouTube channels that are demonstrating the UV resin bubble effect. It's called dragon scales or crocodile skin, snake skin. And I don't know if this is a phenomenon, a common phenomenon, but it just... creates these weird raised areas nice and smooth all right so I'm not really sure now I'm not really sure now if uh, how to clean this I don't think I want to put another layer of resin on these I think these are fine the way they the way they are another little makeup brush this one has mica powder on it actually that works out kind of shining it up i really love this one oh my goodness love it love it love it you're yeah, just getting all the dust off of those. Nice and smooth. Okay. Need my exacto knife. I'm gonna do one at a time. So all I'm gonna do now is I need to clean this rim up and that's just from me being a little sloppy with the resin, the UV resin. But I want to get all that off of this rim. And you can use your sanding block or sandpaper on it too. I don't think I have any. Yeah, maybe a little bit right there. this up. These are just little pieces. So what I'm trying to achieve with the edge is a um, just a clean edge I guess. And so I'm trimming away all the little like see how that is kind of I don't know, just sticks out. I'm just really gently taking my knife and just sort of cleaning that up. And I'm just scraping. Okay, so I like, I really like that edge. Maybe a little bit right here. So I just wanting to eliminate all the little I don't know, weird, weird areas, but not too much because I still want it to be uneven. That's what I like about this particular look is on a wine glass. It's just very natural to me, like an ocean would be. Now this one, I'm a little bit uh, torn about because I don't know if I do this, is it going to affect how this glass looks. Mm. So I'm gonna have to be really careful on this one. But you see how there are these little, I guess when the bubbles were, were 
forming on the resin. It, uh, you know, just kind of create a little, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm like a, I'm like little fingers, maybe, little resin fingers, but I don't want them. So, I don't know, to me that just looks cleaner. But you gotta be careful, you don't wanna lift it. You wanna, now I like this, I like this little part, but I am gonna have to sand that down a little bit more. That one's a little chunky. So see, like right here, it's kind of a, I don't know, just, it looks weird. It just looks like it's not natural. I want it to look natural. I'm going to leave that. And then I'm going to clean this up. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Maybe trim this one. Okay, I'm gonna give it a final sand along the edge because I wanna try to just smooth the very edge down on this one because I did do a lot of trimming. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. This definitely, definitely was the game changer for me in working with UV resin bubbles for sure. Adding that color to the resin first. Give it a quick wipe with alcohol just to get any little dust. And this is a quick wipe. Okay. Definitely a do-again 
I'm really, really liking this. I'm not, I'm not 100% happy with the top on this one. I, it's not as, um, I guess, smooth as I was like. Like, this one turned out okay. But maybe, maybe what would help is when I'm, when I apply the resin. So, you know, I applied the resin with a brush, not this one, but... Uh, I apply the UV resin with the brush and then I put the bubbles on. Maybe I need to not bring the bubbles all the way to the to the edge of where the resin is before I cure it because I think that would help with these little these little fingerling drips. Like I want the drips to be more not the drips, but the top to be more even. So I'm gonna try that on the next one. So the plan right now, is to put these into my booth at my next art show. Honestly, I'm liking them the way they are. Like, I really like the look of this one. It's more matte. It's not shiny and smooth with the bigger bubbles. So the sanding really helps to mute that shininess. They're not shiny. They're not like, wow, that's resin. It's so beautiful. Uh, I really like that, but I'm going to work, I'm going to work on this technique a little bit. I like this one too. This one's, I don't know, different, but. So these are going in my next art show booth, which is in Cocoa Village, uh, in Cocoa, Florida. And March 2nd, 3rd, I'm in, I don't remember what booth I'm in, but I'm on Brevard Street or Brevard Avenue. So. Love, 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 love. Thank you so much for sticking around to watch my video. I hope that I taught you something today. I know I learned something today, so I hope you did too. And uh, thanks again. Happy crafting.